Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of Twitch. This is my first ever Twitch stream, and then we're going to upload this to YouTube later. So if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome to YouTube. I like Twitch. I like watching people on Twitch. My friend Savannah got me inspired to be on Twitch. Check Savannah out. I'm a little sweaty today because I just walked back from Sobble's. Where I got a Green Mountain coffee. And today, guess what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen? We're going to be modeling something. We're going to do some 3D modeling. Uh, controversial subject matter. Look, uh, rifles are everywhere in America, and they're everywhere in video games. I work in video games, but I've never made a rifle professionally for video games. That's not true. I did make rifles, but they were very, very tiny. On Sid Meier's Civilization V, standing the test of time. 15th anniversary of Civ. Uh, yes, yes, yes. A little bit of swag. Firaxis finding the fun. So I worked at Firaxis. I was at Firaxis from 2003, my first internship, until 2012. And I miss those guys a heck of a lot sometimes. So shout out to all my Firaxians. And today we're going to do some modeling. This is a project I started five years ago. Let's hide the reference. Let me know in the chat how this sounds, how this looks. Give me a message. All right. This is something I started probably four or five years ago. And at the time, I thought this was going to be a pretty high poly project that I would then project down to low poly and make a game asset. The poly count somewhere, somewhere in the 2000 triangle range. But now it's 2020, and with games like... Warzone, Call of Duty, the resolution of assets on in games has gotten higher and higher and higher. And I suspect today 30,000 triangles for a game asset isn't as high as it used to be. It's probably standard. In fact, I probably should call up my buddies at Raven and find out what their poly count is for Warzone assets. Got a nice tour there back in February. I have a friend who I used to work with, sort of overlapped my time with, Brian Urbanic, who was the designer on Warzone. Got a nice tour, nice place, real professional, Madison. So anyway, we have several parts of a rifle. This would eventually be some kind of game asset. My plan is to finish the 3D, uh, the 3D model, high poly, low poly, unwrap the low poly, and then bring it to my friend Josh Hardy to teach me Substance Painter. So hopefully y'all can follow along. I'm getting some Facebook messages right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is, uh, I'm learning how to manage the chats, Facebook messaging. YouTube, whatever it is. I need to turn YouTube off because that's too much information. Let's turn off uh, my Patreon stuff. I may turn this into a Patreon thing. We'll see. We'll see. We got one viewer. It's probably me right now. Let's see who uh, if someone might be coming in. Cool. Let's minimize that. Let's talk about this asset. So for you guys out there who don't know anything about guns, well, number one, in Pennsylvania, all this stuff is legal. Uh, I am a trained shooter. I have been shooting for eight years, and I'm pretty aware of safety and stuff. So what we have for reference, we actually got one of these bad boys. I'm modeling something from my own collection. Ladies and gentlemen, this is clear. No need to worry about that. I got no, no bullets in this thing. So what we're going to try to model today quickly is the... The uh, EOTech holographic weapon sight on top. So I don't know. I hope I'm not violating some community guideline here. No showing weapons. Um, it's, it's video games, man. Looks like I need to change my batteries. Something good to do. Um, got a light in front. So we're going to be modeling this guy up. Most of it's already modeled. I've been, the last couple days I've been working on the lower receiver part of that. We'll go into each part of this and what's been modeled and what eventually my goals are. Today I'd like to model the weapon sight on top. Okay, so 
parts of an AR, you have a lower receiver, and this has been box modeled. You have this is what is technically the firearm of the gun. There's a couple components. This paddle here is for the bolt lock open device. Something I haven't done yet is carved out a hole back there for the bumper tube. So that's something that still needs to get done. But then again, this I'm not planning on this asset actually coming apart for my portfolio piece. This is the mag well here. There is a hotkey in Max for getting rid of these brackets, and I don't know, I don't remember what it is. All right, let's unload all this. So we have a handle that connects to the lower receiver. You can see the geometry on that. So I'm in the middle of modeling this. I can mirror it horizontally, and we can see both sides of the thing. That is this part of the object, I assume, is symmetrical. So that is why it is in its half form. Uh, something else that's symmetrical and done is the stock in the back. This whole assembly would be able to move forward and back along a buffer tube to adjust the length of pull. You can leave that there. And I broke this into two components so that when I'm working, I can very quickly slap on a material. Let's call this material green. And slap on a color. Let's give it like an olive green kind of color there. Not too saturated. Darken it up a little bit. Desaturate it a little bit. A little more yellow. A little more yellow. All right. That's kind of cool. And then maybe this uh, black rubber in the back. So this is a quick, a really quick way to get my colors on stuff. It's just by uh, throwing on a flat colored material on there to see. So that's something that's pretty good. I like working in this bronze or orangey brown color because it has pretty good contrast. The only thing I might adjust to this material just to make it show up a little bit better is give it some fill, some self-illumination. Maybe give it like 10%, 13% self-illumination. That's why it doesn't go totally to dark. Maybe a little bit more. Let's make the color just a little bit warmer so we can see it. I like that default warm color that ZBrush used. It's just easy to see. Usually when I'm working full time, I make my outline color dark black, but I forgot how to adjust that. I haven't gotten to it yet, so we're just using white lines. Max has a, when I started using Max, there it didn't have this blue outline highlight thing. Hey, we got four viewers, that's pretty cool. Hopefully it's some friends of mine. Let me know how I sound and how the video looks. First time on Twitch. I was doing YouTube and Facebook streams before this. Got to give a shout out to Vice President of Acquisition Sales, whatever you want to call it, Nate Lindberg at Twitch. Guy I know from Ithaca College back in the day. Friend of my buddy James who's like, Tommy, you got to get on Twitch. So finally, three months later, Nate, I'm on Twitch. Okay, what about what else parts do we have? We have an upper receiver. This would be the top of the gun, and it just plugs in. This is not done either. I need to cut out a hole in the front and in the back. But what we have is the bolt assist. We have a bolt deflector. We have an ejection port where the rounds can come out of, and the Picatinny rail up top. Right now, each of these sections is independent. Oh, that one's actually doubled up. We can delete that one. Is there each individual sections of rail? Looks like I doubled up a lot of these. Um, why are there multiple? That's really interesting. What is going on? I'll need to clear this out. So we'll, we'll edit this. Like I said, I haven't touched this asset in a long time. Um, this is more main, this is boring for you guys, but it's not all welded together. It's just aligned on the same altitude. So in the X, Y, Z, I just have these vertices that are floating in space. They're all overlapping. For a render, it's probably good enough. Yeah, you can't tell that there's a seam there when I'm rendering it. And that's good enough for now. But if I wanted to make this a game asset, maybe I would want to tighten all that stuff up. Especially if I wanted to 3D print it. Everything has to be connected. 
if you wanted to 3D print any of these things. I'm not saying this is not to scale. This is not I'm not getting into the 3D printed weapons debate. Not what this is about. We're talking about art making, and in video games, there's a lot of guns. What else do we have here? We have the forend, free float forend. These little nubby teeth bits are for connecting accessories like optics, laser beams, flashlights, that kind of stuff. We have the barrel where the bullet travels down. We have the front sight. This thing would have a rotating flip up post, which I have not set up yet, but we have the front post sight. We have the rabbit ears and we have the mount for the most part. Then we have a foregrip, broom handle style foregrip. Uh, extension tube is not finished yet. And then rear sight. So what I want to do today, we're going to get into it. We'll go back to other parts, but I want to start making a sight. The receiver, which is neat, neat stuff. So I like to start with a box. We're going to turn snaps on, hitting S. I should have a snap for vertices. Yep, vertex snap is on. It gives me a little yellow cross hatch. So let's just make a box that exists on top of the rim. Cool, it's not bad. We're going to call this box EOTech. 512. Cool. I got some reference. None of those. Let's go to the project I'm in. EO check. Spikes. Hey, what's up, L? L's in the Twitch stream. I'm assuming that's L. Resile21. Is that you? Or is that someone else? L always says love is in the house, so. Let's hope that is him. Thank you, dog. How do I sound? How does it look? I don't, I'm not able to open. Oh, here it is. That's interesting. All right, the kind of box, uh, the box site I'm trying to make. Let's get a, let's get a picture of that. So it's this kind of thing. Is this kind of object? That's not specifically the one I have. That's not it either. I have an older model. This is the newer model. So let's get some reference. Here we go. Yeah, it's going to be this kind of boxy thing. Uh, so we're going to quickly rough it out and then put in, maybe load in some, some reference so I get the size uh, just right. Maybe an image like this that's perfectly profile. This is, again, the wrong object. If I was really spending time here, I would get, a, get my camera out and take a perfectly flat size, side picture. But we're just going to eyeball it for now. So generally, we have a wider shape. Let's convert this to edible poly. The, the object is generally symmetrical. So let's ring, connect. Let's delete half of it. Grow, delete. Now I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen, while I'm doing this, I'm going to screw up a bunch of stuff. But part of learning is failure. Let's move this forward, put the box down. Resile21 says it's great. Well, you're great, too. I think you're great. Today's coffee of choice is Green Mountain Coffee Caramel Vanilla Blend from Sobbles. And, but you didn't expect this, Kombucha Gingerberry in the Spaceman mug. I was watching one of my streams last night from Facebook, and I realized I need to do better at enunciation and speaking a little bit slower. More gaps. So, generally, so what are the components here? We Maybe I should just block out the different components of this piece. We have the general base. There's going to be some kind of battery cap in the front. We're going to mass conceptualize this thing out. Some kind of battery you know, case in the front. Then there is going to be the inner hood which is just kind of on top of the, the body here. And then there is going to be an outer hood, which goes across the whole thing. So, and it's a trapezoidal shape, maybe with a little bit wider on the outside, something like that. So we're just gonna block this guy in, this 
battery cap in the front does something like this. All right, so this outer hood, we need to carve in a hole in it. How am I going to do that? Well, probably easiest is to inset the front and back with the inset button and then delete the poly in the middle and then line up this whole outer shape. Going transparent to see it. That's just align that along the x-axis and pop it in at zero. So I can mirror this thing across. This is something cool too. Let's get the mirror thing turned on. Let's mirror along the x-axis instance, which means anything I do to one side will happen on the other. So if I move this edge, for instance, boom, 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 boom. very cool. So I'm going to be pressing some hotkeys. Unfortunately, you guys can't see. It'll be like one, two, three, and four for verts, edges, loops, quads, and elements. That's how I'm cycling through the different parts of these models for selection. Ah, Zyla's LEAs are backwards. That's so clever. How are you doing today, sir? Tell me what's up. I believe I'm going to be seeing you uh, next next week. Maybe we should talk about that offline. All right, and then I will delete this inside bit. Cool, delete that, delete that. Cool. And I probably don't need that part either. So this part and that part can go away. And then this, yeah, this is going to be a little tricky because what I want to do is have his face all the way extending down to the bottom. Let's undelete that. I'm going to cut from that vert down to the bottom here. And I'll do the same thing down to here. Ladies and gentlemen, this set of skills I might demonstrate here are probably a little outdated. I'm sure there's better ways using the graphite modeling tools up top. So my, my objective here is just to show you what can be done. I'm not trying to show the professionals out there uh, that I'm, I'm better at this or anything than they are. I'm just trying to demonstrate to students who have never messed with Max or any 3D modeling software, what's kind of possible. All right, so now we have um, kind of the general shape of the outer shell. What that outer shell does in the real life is protect the glass on the inside. So it's a high strength polycarbonate glass kind of mix that is a reflector for some internal element, an internal element that has a hologram and a laser, like a holo holographic image inside of it. I know that sounds science fiction and fancy, but it's uh, real. Something like that in the back there. And then this shape, so, so since we have a cover that's gonna go on the top, let's move this cover out in the front. Let's cut this, this part as if it is going to, to have, oh, oops, grab that vert, grab the vert, bum, 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 bum. something like that, and then to keep our geometry always in quads, four-sided quad shapes, let's delete that, so now we have some open geometry there that will not render, if we render that, it, the back sides don't show up. So we need to come back and fill the thing. Holding shift while moving something to create a new face. So that's kind of fun. And now I will target weld that to there, that to there, that to there. So now this, this altitude is going to be different from that altitude. So along the Z, I'm going to copy the Z direction, selecting the Z area down here. Control C, select the other one, Control V. Good and then grab the Y direction along the Y axis. I want this to line up. So copy the Y and then paste the Y there too. Boom, that's good. There's another button over here I use, the Make Planner XYZ, something like that. We've got five total views, four viewers. We've been going for 24 minutes. Things looking pretty good, looking pretty good. I have to say, the Twitch interface is a little more intuitive than the Facebook streaming interface. 
Um, shout out to my friend Sven Weasel Zone, who's going to be helping me set up a better microphone. Um, he's, he's giving me recommendations for what I need to do, including I might borrow from you, Sven, if you're ever going to watch this, your mixer. Because what, what something I'm frustrated with is I can't hear the levels of my own voice and my headphones through the computer yet. I need a separate unit to do that. And I would like a headset that like Joe Rogan has when he does UFC commentating so I can move my head around and not always be talking into a microphone like this. We're just using a Logitech webcam here right now. Cool. I am not what you would say a typical artist, but I think historically uh, I have precedent where I'm I'm not, I used to be much more liberal and now I'm kind of middle of the road I have conservative elements and I have liberal elements inside of my brain uh, but one of my one of my liberal kind of ideas is I think everybody deserves to kind of be treated somewhat equally based on um, good behavior I don't know that's such a touchy subject these days. I'm amazed, hesitant to go into it. I generally love everybody in a Christian kind of way. I was brought up Christian. No longer Christian, but I was brought up Christian. So I can understand some of the teachings of it. On the conservative side, I really believe you have the right to self-defense. So if you want to own a howitzer and put it on your lawn to deter the government from trying to take your property, I kind of understand that too. But I generally like the government. I like big military. I like Teddy Roosevelt walks off to carry a big stick kind of international foreign policy and I have a lot of family members who did uh, military stuff. So right now I have a little bit of the overlap between the left and the right side. I want to pick, I want to know why that's happening. Ah, I see. It looks like it was not perfectly zeroed out. So if I turn the grid on, this is G for grid, we can see this is a little faint. Let me give it a little bit bright. I'm going to make a plane and then zero that plane out and you should see a little easier the general grid work of the world we're working in here. For all those who have not used 3D modeling at all, getting into this 3D space can be kind of challenging. Visualizing an object in 3D, where's my prop? I used to have a little toy. Where's my toy at? Got a Mustang. From my friend Jim Alley. I, I bought this because my friend Jim got a Mustang and it's dope. That engine sounds amazing. It's got some dust on it. Tom, clean your house. It's too dusty. Uh, visualizing an object in 3D isn't a skill everybody has. It's like a muscle you have to train up. Looking at things and then processing it and then putting it on paper, uh, drawing it out is something that artists are supposed to do every single day. Like drawing from life is the process of seeing something that exists in the 3D world and then converting it through the, the brain into a two-dimensional image. And then in Max and 3D software like ZBrush or, you know, if you want to learn ZBrush, go watch Savannah's tutorials. Savannah, I need the, I need the name of your Twitch stream. I'm going to look that up. Uh, oh, awesome. Thanks. So Becky commented. Uh, that it sounds good. Thank you, Becky. Appreciate that. Um, it's hard to talk and think and do at the same time, but we're going to try here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to try here. I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, visualizing 3D. So, taking these different frameworks for visualization and processing them together is something complicated. Something I've struggled with working in the game industry is getting into the zone where you can fluidly go between workspaces and dimensional spaces. ZBrush, Max, Photoshop, the game engine, Substance Painter, all these different tools have their own user interface and have their own axes, like either left-handed or right-handed X, X, Y, Z, or it's the other way, or it's the other way. Like I think Maya does Z forward and back, Max does Z up, and then the different game engines change depending on that. I think Unreal is Z up, too. Uh, 
But back in the day, in computer game, like old school side scrolling games, it was X Y where where X was along the bottom and Y was up because it was just a two dimensional image, and Z was coming out towards you. But then when games got really 3D, the whole thing rotated like that to different kind of Cartesian coordinate systems. So it's all about whether you put your X and Y along the flat plane or on the vertical plane. Is uh, switches switches stuff up. <laughs> to minimize the Facebook stretch. It's got three viewers right now. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Let me know. Please please chime in and chat. Let's have a conversation. What do you guys want to talk about today? Uh, so we're going to have inside of this object is a battery housing. So we've got some old dead batteries that probably need to replace. Got some double A's. So we're going to model uh, generally this thing and then this thing on the other side. We got some holes for screws. That's windage and elevation, and you can see where the battery. Uh, there's there's this flat bit with a carved out circle area, and this hingy thing. This is what we're going to be making, generally. Um, okay. So we got a hinged out bit. Let's just. Okay, what what can I remember right now? We're gonna hash out some stuff real quick. Bump, bump, bump. Let's bring all this forward. Connect. I'm going to combine. Maybe I'll combine these two. That's nah, a different material. We should leave it by itself. Uh, let's put a loop. Swift loop. Can I swift loop here? No, I can't swift loop. Swift loop's a tool that's great if you have good sub D. If you're if you're sub D'd out, get sub D'd out of your mind. Nope, that didn't line up. Cut that there. I like to make a mess and then refine it. Some people think more logically X than Y than Z, and those people have wonderful careers in precision machining and etc. I'm just trying to cut in some more detail so we can do some more interesting stuff. Oops. Sometimes I right click and I lose what I'm doing. Much respect for all the streamers out there. This is a skill just being able to talk. So I find Photoshop work when I'm doing 2D uh, concept art is pretty easy for me to talk and demonstrate at the same time. I can I can do that because I've been drawing for 30 for three years or something. So it's fluid. For instance, let's, uh, let's show what I've been working on there. Recently did a illustration of Baraldemore for Mike Legrand. This was a lot of fun to do. So, so I do 2D concept art too. I actually have a lot of fun doing that. But most of my life, the 3D work has been what's paying the bills. So it's the technical side. My friend Elle, who's listening to this right now, we talk a lot about how, like her, he, Elle's a teacher and his wife is a teacher too. And we talk about as an artist, you you have to have ideas to be creative, but usually you're getting paid for having a skill. And the more technical that skill is, usually the higher demand you can have for it. All right, so something this is ugly, but it just want I wanted just to rough in that shape off the top of my head. Um, also, we have a little. There's going to be some kind of pad here. We're going to copy this forward. Let's uh, shrink it down just a little bit. Grab the loop on the outside and then shift drag it back. So this is going to represent the rubber pad. Let's delete this space and make it zeroed so it lines up. And while we're modeling, you know, we can we can assign a material to this. Let's, let's put a material on the whole thing first and foremost. So the whole object's going to get this... Um, whoa, it's really dark. That's interesting. Oh, maybe because it was just selected, a little color theory thing. Okay. Looks like it shades and changes color a little bit when um, I've selected it, which is kind of weird. So let's crank up the color just a little bit. Let's make it a little bit brighter. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Wait, did I undo that? Yeah, that's better. Okay, you can see it. 
Um, that, and then this little rubber pad. Let's throw the rubber on there. One thing, the you know, when you assign materials, that doesn't transfer over to an instance object. So you have to redo that. So this way we can just mark it and know that there's rubber rubber stopper thing there. Let's extend the front of this out pretty far. Cool. Um, on the back end, there's going to... Uh, I'm, I'm forgetting my mental thing, what's going on back there. I do see that there is a cut. Let's... Let's do a swift loop around this. Swift loop's a tool that Josh turned me on to. Let's do a couple loops. Let's make that loop along the edge Z up. So it's not changing the geometry, but we're flattening it out like that. And we're gonna, this is gonna be a little messy, but we're gonna fix it up. Let's make the back side of this flush vertical along the, well, that's not right, along the Y. Cool. And then there's this kind of, look, it looks like it's kind of straight up and down and then carves in a little bit. So let's go that same thing. It's, I think it's sloped just a little bit there. Something like that. See how the instance isn't working? That's weird. Let's try this again. Instance. Yeah, instance. It should mirror transform geometry. Okay. There's a new option there I wasn't familiar with. All right, let's try that. Cool, so this shape's looking a little bit better. I'm looking over, and it looks like this, this whole front end is sloped. And we're gonna give it another swift loop here. And then we're gonna move this part forward a lot. This outer housing is extends past and in front of the battery diodes. See how this isn't mirroring over? That's weird. I wonder if the mirror tool doesn't work like it used to work because they want everyone using symmetry. Um, that's very strange. Let's try this one more time. Mirror world along the transform. Copy instance. I want I want instance. W WTF. Is this working now? Yeah, now it works. I don't that's so weird. I don't know what's going on. Cool. A good thing to check is the back face call on properties so we can see whether there's not geometry or not. So this side doesn't have back face calling, so we're seeing the back of a face. The normal is going out this way, and we're, we're seeing a artificially duplicated back to that, but in reality, the geometry does not indicate it has backing to it. So that's, uh, that's actually the preferred way I like to model, but sometimes it's better for visualization to do other things. Doing the other, doing the other thing. Cool. Cool glass submarine. Submarine. So let's extend the inside of this. So let's grab all the front edges. So I'm double clicking the loop, which is the line of connecting sequential edges. And then also the back side. Oops, it's all connected. Except this one. And bridge it. Hit the bridge button. Bridge takes loop over here and loop over here, and then poof, creates geometry in between the two of them. Even inside and outside. This will eventually press fit in. So let's kind of do that right now. Select all the outside verts. Bring it in a little bit like that. Actually, no, let's leave it like this. Let's bring what's here out. That'd be better. Let's take what's there. And bring it out to oops, not that one. I want this piece. Let's bring that up to here. Something like that. Might be cool. And then let's put a loop on this bit. Swift loop, where you at? Why didn't it, it didn't loop? It didn't loop all the way through. Probably because I got some kind of cut somewhere that I didn't intend on having. Oh, I see. There's a there's a cut down here. I really wish I remembered what hockey it was to get rid of these brackets. Let's look at a Google 3DS Max bracket hockey. Was it J K J? The J isn't. Oh yeah. Okay, it's gone. No. 
J is now Shift J. Okay, Shift. Haha, -ha. Shift J. The bracket. Um, I'm going to add a bookmark for the keyboard shortcut tables. Do not want to give feedback. Very cool. Bookmarking for that. Got four viewers. Welcome to the podcast. Let me know. If you can hear me, if you can see me, if this is stupid, you can say it. Tom, this is dumb. I know this already. And I'll say good for you. Let's give a shout out to some people who inspired me to stream. Uh, El Medina, Nut and Fancy, Forgotten Weapons, In Range TV, Dr. Disrespect, what happened to him? Really curious what happened there. I think he violated some community guidelines and got a little cancel cultured. I don't know. I, I loved his content. I watched a little bit. Who else do I like? I like Savannah Streams. Let's do the front part. Okay, so this is going to be the cover. It's going to line up generally in the back. Put it at the top of that. Somewhere like that. We can leave a little gap. Bring that in just a little bit. And then bring the forward bit. Let's change some colors so I can see some things a little bit more clearly. We're going to make the housing. Let's make a new material for these and this and this part. And we're going to make it like a purple anodized. My friend Jojo. She like purple. Let's just make it purple. Want it to be purple. Um, and let's make a specular kind of pinkish color. This is fun. Boom. Let's crank this back up just a little bit. Cool. That way we know what the body part is. Let's get it done. All right. So this piece is what we're going to make. It's got a gap in the middle and it's rounded on the outsides. So there's a rounded bit in the front. Swift loop. Swift loop is going to be our friend here. Let's loop there, loop there, and then bring this in. Bring that vert in. So we generally have a rounded bit, something like that. Let's do another loop here, and then this, this, and this will all come in just a little bit. We'll round all that up. Let's do a loop on the bottom. So we can match the not quick slice swift loop here. Probably should learn what the hockey for swift loop is. For another broadcast. Let's let's take this loop, move it a little bit closer to the outside. Two trailer park girls go around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. Something like that. Just for now. Just for now. Something. Okay. Let's carve in the inner gap. Swift loop there. Let's make this perfectly aligned along the x axis. Pretty cool. And let's do it again. Something else you can do is the extrusion tool. You can extrude stuff out or in. So extrusion in this case might be good. Let's extrude it backwards into itself by a few degrees. What would you say? What would you say? It's actually a little ridge. There's actually a little ridge inside of this. So we're going to do this thing twice. Probably good there. We're going to delete all these poly, not all these polys, but the ones that are in the middle. Um, get rid of that. And then we're going to swift loop inside. Of, ooh, 
Swift loop inside of this, like there, and then bevel in a little bit more, maybe, or extrude in a little bit more. Just a little bit more, something like that. Delete these polys. I like working low poly, just have more control. Delete that bit in the back, that bit in the back. Do you see this didn't? Sometimes it seems like it loses its uh, ability to mirror this stuff, which I find to be quite frustrating. Let's make the other... Alt-X is a hotkey for transparent. Let's detach this object. Okay, this part right here. That's it. Detach. Call it EOTech Bat Cover. Cool. That's going to be its own thing. And then I can make this housing unit transparent by hitting Alt-X. And I can just work through that. What's up, Savannah? Hey! Savannah says, I can't stay long because I'm in the car, but it's good to see you modeling. Thanks! Thank you. Appreciate it. It's good to see me modeling, too. Thanks for checking in letting me know that you saw the stream. We're learning this. We're learning this together. You're doing a great job on Twitch. Great job. I was watching a bit of the broadcast. I saw you had like 50 viewers the other night. It's awesome. I tuned out when you had like more viewers and you um, had hairs on your head. Good to see you doing well. Those That ZBrush stuff's amazing. How you could just start with just a little sphere or a bubble and then like put a whole bunch of balls together and then Dynamesh the whole thing. It's incredible. It's a different neural pathway kind of thought making process to art, and it's hard for this old brain to wrap its head around. Okay, so I don't want this part rounded here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a good drive. Cool. We'll talk later. Got to do Zoom chat sometime. Catch up. Catch up. Talk about the state of the industry. What's the state of the industry? What does Tom think about game development right now? Um, there's too much stress. It's, it's there's too much stress in the game biz right now. It should not be this frustrating. Crunch needs to end. There's enough money to go around. Take your damn time. Make make the project good. That's what I think. You got you gotta listen to experienced people. The, after this, uh, you know, social justice movement kind of chills out a little bit. We got to get back to work. I mean, it's good. You know, every every ten years, the rules change a little bit. And if you don't change with it, you're going to get left in the dust. Why? Because you're, you're going to get old someday, and you're not going to be able to catch up. That's interesting. There's a lot of, like, subtle... There's a lot of interesting little subtleties to this. Like, there's um. Actually, seems like there's a part down here that, it, that extrudes out. It's like there's a it's a little bracket that holds the outer mount in place. That mount mount's the wrong word. Protective cover? Not really sure. Tom, the question is why are you obsessed with firearms? And it's because there's a combination between military history and art. And military and the art world have uh, worked hand in hand for time immemorial. And I'm all about the martial uh, skills of the world. You know, in the Roman times, it was the legion and the craftsmen of Rome made the lorica segmentata armor that covered the Roman legion and the swords and the pilums and the slings and stuff. It took a craftsman to make the protective armor and weapons that kept the state alive. And then we see the papal. Uh, military, the Holy Roman Empire, a thousand years later, we, you know, Byzantines, and then we see the Turks, the Ottomans, uh, the Arabic world with its beautiful colors and armors and all these kinds of things. Craft and military have been mated since the dawn of time. Uh, the people who customize their weapons and paint them and decorate these things are prized to them. Think about the armors of Maximilian the First, 
Uh, let's just do a little picture of that. Let me guys, let's, let's talk about Maximilian 1500. Let's look at the armors. Ooh. Let's look at this. Look at these beautiful things. At the Met, heavy metal on display. Ooh, look at this beautiful stuff. Ever been to an armor show? Go to the Met. I wish I could have gotten up here for this. Uh, the heavy metal armor of Maximilian. Really cool stuff. Oh, look at those. Look at those gauntlets. Oh, jeez. i got to be a subscriber. Anyway, the Met, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, even Baltimore's Walters collection have armors on display. These, these started out as weapons of war or defensive protections of war, and the more rich and famous the um, fighter or whatever you want to call you got, the fancier it got. Look at this portrait. Someone, Some artist had to be hired to make this painter painting of a general, king, nobleman kind of thing. So this stuff's always been together. I've always been interested in, in like battlefield drawings too, like war artists, WW2. Like there was there's filmmakers and then there were people who did drawings in the field. And that was something I think I wanted to do when I was a kid. Like I wanted to be a soldier. I looked up to my brother and my cousin, Nate, Nate, who was in the 75th Rangers, 3rd Battalion, and my brother Tim, who was uh Artillery, National, Army National Guard, got into computer stuff, Chief Information Officer, Army Connecticut. Um, so I was inspired by these kind of guys growing up. My dad was in the Navy, fought in Korea. So I saw this kind of stuff growing up. Talked a lot about apprenticeship in another stream. And apprenticeship, you know, what your master is showing you can influence you greatly when you're a little kid. I kind of think that I have this theory that anything like that was fun or pleasurable or exciting that you were exposed to before you hit the teenage years like let's say 13 in my case it was 13 like whatever i was having fun doing at 13 whatever surprised me at 13 like stays with you like it imprints it, it hard imprinted into my brain the kinds of things i would be enjoying later on in life and one of those things was paintball and shooting with my uncle bob i want to give a shout out to my uncle bob fesco who was in the army and and deployed to Germany after the war, you know, West Germany, to keep the peace. He was a marksman, won a bunch of competitions, and he taught me how to shoot when I was 13 years old. The, the importance of respect of firearms. What are the four firearms rules? Well, treat every gun as if it's loaded. Uh, keep your finger off the trigger until you are ready to shoot. Be aware of your target and the backstop. And what's the fourth? What am I blanking on? Trigger gun like it's loaded. Figure out the trigger. Don't point the gun at anything you don't want to destroy. So don't be waving the gun around. I was at the range with a buddy this weekend, and a lovely couple came over to watch my friend Josh and I run through some targets on our, our 22s. And she had just gotten a Smith & Wesson 380EZ, which I love. No judgment. I love the Smith & Wesson 380EZ. It's a fun uh, training pistol, I think. And also a self-defense arm for somebody with a little bit less uh, arm strength, hand strength. So if you're not used to it's a good it's a good gun to get started to bridge between the 22. Like, I would start with 22s and then think about maybe 380s, then 9s, then other stuff. Bigger and bigger, like get get that strength built up in your wrist so you can. So she wanted to show. She's really proud of this new gun she got, and she's like, "Hey guys, here's check out my gun." And she's like waving it all in the air, pointing the muzzle at us. We're like, "Whoa, please don't muzzle me." So there's a way to handle these things where you're aware of what direction that barrel's going. So usually, rack it open and then point it to the ground, or rack it open, point it up, and then let show people that it's empty. Don't be waving that muzzle at people. It scares people. Now, if you're like in the military, what are you going to do? Coming up on an hour. We're making progress here. This is kind of fun. Kind of cool. Now, let's get the back kind of started out. I know there's a wheel on this side. Let's get a cylinder 
mocked up in here. Do you all like listening to music while you watch videos? I do. I know, like in the era of um, music costing money, which it should, there should be like a service where YouTubers can pay a small, like, five dollar a month fee and just have royalty free music that they can stream in the background like you could have a DJ like youtuber DJ and there's like 10 channels maybe this already exists it probably does we got this little wheel here and that's the screw mount something like that probably didn't make enough yeah I should have made this a little bit higher res uh, we'll just we'll just chamfer it all let's ring around ring around uh, that's a chamfer button. Yeah, it's kind of ugly. Yeah, that, that doesn't look good. Let's redo this. Let's make a higher res version. So let's go cylinder. What I should have done is that I should have figured this out beforehand. 90 degrees get the cylinder in place and then adjust the amount of sides until it looks good. 20 is probably too much. Let's try 18. 18. Let's do something that's dividable by 4. 20. Sure. And then this needs to, is it around the top? It is rounded. <clears throat> My goodness. Okay. Dolly. Something like that. And let's create the screw head side. Connect that, connect that. So let's imagine that this is going to have... There's a way to mathematically do this. There's definitely a way to mathematically do this. Logically. But I don't got the time. So I'm just going to cut. Cut there, cut there. Cut there. Cut here. And then we're going to use our edge constraint and have this be perfectly up and down along the Y. Nope, I need all of this there on the Y. Nope, one more. And then this one too, perfectly up and down along. Y, cool, and then we should be able to, we just delete these? Does that make sense? No, next ain't right. Z, the Z is in local space right now. All right, it's kind of interesting. Let's uh, weld these bits. Bump, bump, bump. Let's weld these bits down here. Bump, bump, bump. This ain't so much of a tutorial, more as like a demonstration. Just demonstrating what can be done. More, that's the demonstrations are more of the apprenticeship mentor model. Uh, true teaching requires a knowledge of how human beings learn. And after I actually taught as an adjunct professor at MICA and the Art Institute, I gained a real appreciation of folks who really know how to teach. Also from my rifle instructor, Gary 
and pistol instructor Gary Melton at Paramount Tactical, who teaches the State Department how to shoot. Former former Green Beret, Paramount Tactical Solutions .com, I believe. Okay, so I'm not able to weld across the middle, and I don't know what that's about. Why can't I weld across the middle? Let's see. Can I, can I connect these? Connection achieved. X. There we go. So we got like a little screw turny thingy there. Got four viewers still. You guys just lurking in the background? That's cool. That's cool. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Who's out there? Holler. Let me know who you are and what your skill level is. What's your level of experience doing 3D stuff? First day on Twitch ever. Thrilled to have you. Do you believe in life after love? Do you stay inside yourself? No, 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 it's going on. Oh. I want to give a shout out to my friend Chris Solzbeck. He used to work at Firaxis. Now works at Zenimax Online Studios. And is a badass modeler. Love that guy. Haven't seen him in forever. But he and I had a good time at Micah back in the day. Met an animation class with my other friend, Brian Mahoney. Great guy. He is the founder, one of the two founders of Look On Media in Baltimore doing VR games. We had a good old time, and I miss those guys. I miss those days. 15 years ago, we were hanging out in the Halo Club, and... Jamie Sheridan's 2D animation class. They were sophomores. I was a junior. We had a good old time. I think Sean Mark was in that class, buddy from Micah Days as well. Love that guy. So creative. Works at Big Huge. Big Huge Games. Their game is Dominations on the phone. Also, Arcane Showdown. Arcane Showdown on the phone. Um, all right, I'm spending too much time on this. The resolution on this is too high. Painting teacher Bob Salazar and Micah said, you know, you got to have a holistic approach to stuff. I'm going to revisit that thing uh, later. That's fine for now. Let's put a little color on it. Boom, that's good. The okay, other side... This is an asymmetrical top house. The other, let's let's get the overall geometry, the symmetrical part, right first, and then we'll cut in, cut in the bits later. So we have on the right, we have on one side the the proportion and shape of this. We actually have a bit of a curved slope in the front. It's sloped back just a little bit on top, but this this whole face is flush, and then this is flush, and then this it's kind of rounded in campered. There are some screws here and it's flat and then cut out and then flat and then carved again. So I'm going to try to get those shapes of this outer housing and then do the other side which you can see has a, a windage and elevation screw that's been recessed and carved out. So. But what's symmetrical? I think these bottom mount, these these mounting screws, are symmetrical. Pretty sure. All right. Let's see if we can get that profile. It would be. This is a really good time to get photo reference in here to get this shape just right. So um, yeah, maybe let's go look uh, for a picture. Geotech. 512. Let's see if there is a side photo of this. Close, close, but not. Oh, that's perfect. This is the one. That's that's the one. That's got the sh that's got the shapes on it. So we'll save this image. Cool. And then we're gonna put up a picture. 
Let's put a, let's put a picture down, and we're gonna throw that image on, and then we'll uh, give it a UV map, and we will align that UV map to Z. Uh, gizmo, let's rotate the gizmo of that 90 degrees. 90, 90, 90 degrees. And then we will do a bitmap fit where we load in that bitmap. And Max knows how to line it up. Cool. Let's shrink the gizmo down a little bit. Cool. So now we have this as a reference image. 90 degrees. Nine, on 80 degrees, we shall move it up here, and then we shall we shall scale, shall scale the platform. Inspired by a Disney, you know, thinking about the German, you know, German scientists who were extradited from Chamonix to come to the U.S. Operation Paperclip. Something like that, maybe. Let's make let's make this transparent. That uh, transparent. Uh, let's get the scale of this. So it sits under the rail, like like the bottom edge there clips underneath the rail and mounts up against it. Let's see on this guy. Yeah, it looks like the bottom edge lines right up on the bottom of the Picatinny 1913 rail. Yeah, it's pretty flush. And then it just barely clears on this part here. Hope you guys think this is interesting. Holler, holler. Check in the feedback. Looks pretty good. This camera works all right. So my lighting situation here is nice. I got northern light in my guest bedroom office. I have some windows. So I just crack them a little bit. So I have some light from there, light from there. I probably could open up this a little bit more so you can see my face. And then a little light for old glory in the background. Where's OBS at? Philippine Broadcast Studio. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? So this is what happens when Thomas had a donut, kombucha, and a large coffee. Just mix it all up. Caffeine, sugar. This is fun. You guys having a good time? I'm having fun. Talking to myself. We give a shout out to Annie Letterman. Letterman. Really funny comic. I'm thinking about joining her on Patreon because I want to support more women comics. Alright, that button probably goes over the rail. What's this? It's that part. I don't know. Does this look too big? Relationship wise, what's the hood size? Compared to the bolt or port, hood size is about the hood on top is about the same as the injection port cover front to end of the spring. Right? Let's eyeball it here. I can measure this. You know, if I wanted to be really precise, I would have a little ruler or a tape measure and get this thing about right. But instead, we can just kind of eyeball it. Let me move that closer to here. Is that about? Yeah, about right. Close enough. Cool. Yup. Yup. E, e, e. Notice that when I was in France, I e, e, that e. Nope, let's scale this up just a little bit more, just a touch. You got the touch. All right, so now we need to scale and move everything around to fit this profile. So that is going to be flush. We're just going to scale it like that. Go up like this, go out like that. So my process is like I kind of mass conceptualize it and then 
and and then refine it. And that's what digital allows you to do. Digital allows that process because if you're doing traditional media, you can't screw up. You can't make something wrong the way I just make it wrong and then fix it. All right. See, this is so easy though. I feel like this is easier. Like, get your general parts and then move them around to make them fit. Right? Let's grab all of this junk. Yeah, this is just such a better way to better way to do this. So I'm, I'm like rope selecting. This outer housing probably should be its own geometry. Let's detach that. EOTech outer housing. So now I can just edit that bit. Let's hide the inner. Because I'm, I'm getting like. I'm getting overwhelmed. With the information, where are some of these subdivisions? My reference plane, left point of view. Let's get rid of the grid. Said too many lines. Too many lines. Who's watching? I got four viewers. Who are those three other viewers? Who are they? Who's watching me? I bet it's the government. Andrew, I know it's you, working at some three-letter agency that I can't mention on my stream. Stop it! Actually, no, I'm welcome. No, don't stop it. Keep watching me. Keep watching me. Let's get some cut geometry in. Cut some stuff. Cool. Let's take these loops and along the edges. Let's align them along the Z. So they are straight up and down. Straight up and down. Do that. Let's grab that. Move it in. Move that in. That's kind of nice. Let's move this uh, up, maybe. Drop the constraint. Bring it back. Bring this in. Housing's there. Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Let's take a look around. It's getting there. It looks like it's it's like curved back just a little bit at the top. Press Z to recenter the camera. I feel like it's something like that. We need we need a cut here. Otherwise, this is gonna get. This is gonna get curved. This this corner here is a little bit weird. So we need a cut there and we need a cut over the top. This is probably gonna get rounded out at some point. Um bum. Let's come back over here. Connect. Connect. I know this looks like a mess. Give me father for making a mess. Z grab that altitude along the edge. Let's keep, let's match that Z up there. Let's match that Z up there. And let's match the X up. Just for now, is it really that important what the X and Y of these verts are? I don't, I don't know, probably not. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be rounding this off anyway. We're going to need a front profile picture as well. Let's see, EOTech. Um, is there a front image? Ah, these are all like kind of front. These are broken ones, but these are good. Old school. But I think the I think that's probably still good enough. The 
just checking if there's any more to be sure. See this, it's it's got some perspective on it, and the less perspective, the better. You might just have to eyeball, ladies and gentlemen. Go with a perspective shot and hope for um, let's go with that. Ninety and ninety degrees. Ninety degrees. And then we shall put the texture on the object on the ship. We shall do the bitmap fit. I love the Germans. I'm not making fun of them. It just sounds so smart. If you add a little Austrian or German accent, it sounds like you know what you're doing. Ooh, what did I do? Is this an instance? I might have instanced this instead of a um, separate object. Uh, yeah, copy. I want to copy instead. 90. Texture. Scale the gizmo down. Nope, not the whole object. Just the gizmo. Let's go from the front point of view. Gizmo, something like... You know, I bet my I bet my pick rail is too cute. I would not be surprised if my pick rail pick pick a tinny nineteen thirteen. Yep, I think it is. What was I saying about don't point at guns at yourself? This is empty. This is totally empty. Don't worry about it. Stop freaking out. It's okay. We're gonna take the man. It's gonna be yeah. I don't, don't want to worry about it. Will be for later. All right, but we know we can scale this because that's going to line up. Let's see how's that engage. Nails fixed on that side. Sloped up in the front there. Looking at the back though. It hangs quite a bit off the sides. Quite a bit. It's really hard to tell well that's mounted what the scale actually is. Oh, you know what? I could probably compare it to that. So I can see the side view that we have a scale on. How convenient is that, right? Let's hide this. Hide that part. Little bit bigger. Little bigger. Is that it? I mean, it's pretty close. Gas tube's in the way. Hide the gas tube. Ah, okay. So down just a little bit more. Up. Uh, so, something like that. This might be this might be good enough for what we're doing. Okay. See, it doesn't seem to line up there though. All right? Doesn't it, doesn't seem like can't have it all ways. So annoying. So annoying. We're just gonna have to assume this is close enough. It's it's not gonna be perfect. So go nuts trying to make this thing perfect. Let's hide uh, most of this except the upper receiver. I'm 
Wait, does that line up? Did I not do the... How did I screw this up? How did I not, not get the top? Did I rescale this thing? What's going on? Oh, this got all screwed up. Yeah, this got it. This got all jacked up when it was um when I did the bitmap bit thing. Did that work? What image is this? Seven nine nine seven nine oh four. Jeez. Yeah, I screwed it. I screwed it up. Okay, that's right. Now let's scale this thing back. So annoying. I mean, I'm just showing that I'm human, right? That's the objective here. Let's get this gizmo. Yeah, that's better. Now it's making more sense. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna assume something like that because that image is in perspective. Let's save this, man. It's been an hour at work. I haven't saved. I mean, auto save is pretty good, but let's go. Um, new file. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, we got some uh, chatters in here. DP D for a Tom. And someone says, setting this up was a pain. Looks good. This is Joe. Hey, Jojo. D4, a D Pahara. Oh, is it probably Devin O'Hara? Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, what's up, Devin? Hey, man. How's it going? <laughs> I'm just reading. It's like, I had to set this up. She just watch Tom. I said, it was worth it. Same and agreed. Well, guess again. It is, uh, is it Drew? Probably Drew. Drew O'Hara? <laughs> yeah, it's Drew. Yeah, Drew's here. Woo. Awesome. Number one fan, Drew. Thanks for hopping in, dude. Thanks for hopping in. Got to get you all to the range. We need another O'Hara range day. Gotta bring my 22s out to the farm, and we'll just, like do some drills in the backyard. Got some steel targets. Bring some steel. Teach Corinne how to shoot. That'd be fun. Some bows and arrows, throw some axes. It's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is cool. So I'm glad you two hopped in. Thank you, Jojo. Thank you, Drew. Because I'm learning how to work, check, chat, work, check, chat. And I'm testing if this arrangement works. Let me see. Let me show you guys what I'm looking at. So I got the Cintiq, which is usually better for the drawing thing, with the, the feed and... This is this is OBS Open Broadcast Studio, which is just the streaming controls and audio monitor. And then there's the Twitch interface. And I'm just, uh, it's just this is just complicated. And then the actual screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Deep O'Hara. I was trying to, <laughs> Drew, I was trying to tell my mom, like, about the interview I did with your brothers, and she was getting so confused. I'm like, listen, mom, there's four brothers, they all start with the letter D. <laughs> Derek, Drew, Dustin, Devin, that order. Like, what are we talking about? I like, which one did you go to school with? I went to school with Dustin. He looks like a Viking. He had long blonde hair, it was beautiful. And I want him to grow it back. I want to start a GoFundMe campaign to get Dustin to grow his hair long again. I think that'd be rad for the channel. For the Art of Craftsmanship channel. Oh yeah, forgot to mention him today. Shout out to Dustin O'Hara, Art of Craftsmanship. He inspired me to do YouTube stuff. YouTube streaming. His YouTube channel is awesome. YouTube brother Devin does the, does the work for it. I gotta watch. Uh, don't you got a YouTube thing about being on a boat? I gotta watch that the boat video you made. I gotta. I'm gonna put that on after uh, we're done streaming here, and I'm gonna listen to you talk about boat stuff. 
I like boats. Friend down in Annapolis just got a sailboat. I want to go sailing with them. I might get back into it. Cause, you know, you might not remember this, but I got a concussion doing the Constellation Cup race back in like 2014, 2015. Uh, I got hit by a boom, and I just I realized I have seven, six or seven concussions. So I hear after like the first two are free, and then after that it's like pretty bad. So um, gotta gotta be a little careful. I just took a break. I'm like I can't. I'm not good enough on the sailboat. I'm not aware enough to be safe. It's kind of like with firearms. Like I've had a lot of firearms instruction. I really need to have like some kind of sailing class. Or, or maybe just listen to you guys. Maybe I can pay you guys to give me a class on sailing. That'd be cool. Can I commission the Drew, Captain Drew, to give me the what's up? Give me the 411 on the boat boat. Boat boat stuff stuff. Drew says, Dustin took one of the forehead back. Ooh, ooh. Derek to the temple and Charles to the back. Oh, how's Chuck doing? Charles is so funny. Heck yeah, we'll learn you some sailing. Oh, I would love that. Uh, seriously, I would love that. I will drive. I will come down and uh, be mobile ballast. You got all 275 pounds of Tom Tom. I'll go wherever you tell me. Dude, I had so much fun in San Diego. I took my stepdad, Jerry Greer, from Scotland. Jerry, hello, Tommy, you're looking great. Can I make you some eggs and tea? Jerry Greer took him on a sailboat in San Diego, a clone of the America ship too tall uh, sloop i don't know what, what kind of category of ship that was but it was the founding ship for the america's cup and they built they built a copy of it and it's now a whale watching sailing boat it's got you know it's under power most of the trip and i took him out <coughs> and we watched some gray whales out in the pacific it was dope USS uh, Abraham Lincoln was coming into port as we came back in. It was cool to see that. And a Los Angeles class attack sub was coming out as we went out to sea. It was dope. San, I mean, San Diego is just amazing. All the I love the military activity out there. The, the water's beautiful. You can watch people surfing. Uh, I'm, a t I'm terrible in the water, but I do like watching. There's something relaxing about it. Jojo came out. We got to see the seals and the sea lions. We had a good cry about it. They were so cute. Got to meet some seal friends. What boat were you on the Constellation Cup? And God bless you. Thank you, too, man. Uh, the boat was called Mangus. Magnus? It was so cool. Yeah, we should have spent two days in, in the hood. We'll go back. We'll go back someday once COVID stuff's all over. We'll get out there. Hang out in the Hoya Cove. Mangus, Mark James's boat. <laughs> Joe, Joe says, I was thinking about their smelly, sleepy butts this week. Yeah. Yeah, they're so stinky. So stinky. I'd be too if I had to just eat fish all the time. All the time. And let's be honest, my breath smells like hamburger because that's all I eat. Burgers and fries. Latest latest uh, craze. Instead of ketchup on fries, go with the A1 steak sauce. Mm-hmm. A1 steak sauce with the five guys fries. It's kind of what's up. It's kind of what's up. So I'm going to throw some hot sauce in there, and then my butt is not happy about it later. So what did you do to me? Drew, have you had the Old Bay hot sauce yet? Is that good? Mayo's good, Joe. Yep. The mayo ketchup is my second favorite. Mayo ketchup, it's just, I know it's terrible for me. I, I have this impression that... A1 is probably a slightly healthier condiment than the Russian, is it Russian dressing ketchup mayo? What do you call that? European style? French style? I mean, I remember the first time I had it was when my buddy Trevor came back from Europe. 
And he's like, you guys got to have this. Got to mix the mayo with the ketchup. And I think that was at Brewer's Art. Those garlic truffle fries. Oh, my God. God, I miss Brewer's. You know, that, that's the big reason I left Baltimore City, well, number one, it was the crime. Number two was I would, if I lived there as an adult, I would be at Brewer's every single night getting fat. Getting fatter. Getting fitur. That's how they say it in France, right? Fitur. Fitur. Couture, fitur. Let's make this planer. Uh, mm, let's line it against the. Uh, this is going to be ugly. Let's align it along the Y and then rotate it back. Let's try this. Let's try this. This is going to be ugly. Uh, let's do that. And then bring this last bit back a little. Ugh, ugly. Just a little. Uh, just, ugh, ugh. Kind of need this to cut across. So, uh, yeah, I don't love this, but we need the information in order for this thing to cut right. We need like the horizontal milling geometry here for this to slope correctly. Nope, nope, nope. I want this. I want that there, that there, that. Just a little, just a little. That's yeah, kind of, it's kind of close. Let's hit the auto smooth on this and see how that looks. Oh, it's a little, is that something like that? I'm getting tired, ladies and gentlemen. Seems Canadian, JoJo says. She says arteries slamming shut on the mayo ketchup. Joe says uh, on fries, it's the upper Midwest thing to do. Probably because a lot of French people settled. Little French and German people settled in the Midwest, so they brought that European mayo fetish with them. The Germans like to fetishize the condiments. This rounds that direction a little bit. Dupe. Let's call this a uh, ref EO tech profile profile. And I call it, wait, which one I selected? Profile, and this will do ref EO tech. Portrait. Ladies and gentlemen, what are you eating for lunch for today? It's two o'clock. What did you have for lunch? I need to get lunch. I don't know what to get. Subway? Might be a subway day. My buddy Josh is grilling dogs later. Hot dogs, not actual dogs. Hot dogs, ladies and gentlemen. Right, let's get the rest of this plane. The land is full of tigers. Object properties, back face call off so I can see what I'm doing. Extend it that way. This needs to be up higher. All right, and then this needs to go back. All right, so I'm not, oof. Just so ugly. This, this needs to go back like that. And then is that rounded? I just, uh, 
Ugh, just ugh. This is complicated. I'm running out of steam here. Too difficult. I used to do this for eight hours a day. How did I do that? Oh yeah, they were paying me three hundred bucks a day to do it. That's how. That's how I did it. That's how I did this back in the day. I was making money. Like fifteen hundred a week. Bennies and stuff. Hondos. Yeah, where all that money go? Come on, Tom, what happened to all that money? What happened to all of it? Let me tell you what happened to that money. <laughs> That's where that money went. Let's go. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen. How about them O's? Are they winning yet? Do they have a winning season? Drew? Joe says, seedy crackers and goat cheese. Mmm, sounds good. Goat cheese. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Joe, I want to do a post-stream call with you and get your opinion on this madness. Uh, I want to know about the user interface. What do you think of the quality, et cetera, et cetera. Drew, you the man. Uh, let's talk. Holler whenever they get, you guys are doing a casual sale or a practice sale that I can hop on and uh, do some learning and do some social distance sailing. I'm pretty sure I do not have the COVID, but I'm willing to wear a mask for a sailboat run. Or we can just wait till next year. It's all good, dude. And then we'll figure out a range day. That'll be good times. All right, thanks for hanging out. It's been an hour and 30 minutes. It's 2 o'clock. I'm going to stop the stream and go on with my day. Thank you so much for hanging out. This has been Turbo Simons. And, uh, I don't know how to end the stream. We're just going to hit the stop streaming and see what that does. Oh, Drew says anytime you want to come out, just call Dust every Wednesday. Ooh, I'll talk to Dustin. I'm going to write that down. Wednesdays. This Wednesday, I am busy with something. Wednesday. I think I'm going for a hike. Wednesday. Wednesday. Sale. Practice. 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 Bye-bye. Stop streaming.